here. So today I've got something a little bit different. Uh, behind me I've got three helmets and today I'm trying to talk about uh, what kind of helmet fits you, what you're looking for in a helmet when you go to purchase a helmet and usually the different ratings. Um, so hopefully we can get through this pretty simple, it's pretty smooth. So real quick, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. If you like the video, like it. If I miss any information or you think I should add some more information in a different video, please go down in the comments, leave a comment. It's all on you. So let's get started. So today when you're purchasing a helmet, uh, there's plenty of stores like Cycle Gear. You have your motorcycle stores. Um, there's a whole bunch of stores nowadays that'll sell you your helmets. So behind me, like I said, I have three different helmets. Um, each ranging throughout the grades. So we have our low end, our mid end, and then our high end helmets. So with these, you have your price ranges usually between on your low end side about $100 to $200. Your mid end side, you're going to come up to about three, four hundred dollar range. And then of course your high end, you're looking at five, six hundred to way, way more, depending upon what you're looking at. That all depends on brands, brand names, and whatnot. So, when you're talking about mid-range, um, mid-range helmets, pretty sturdy. You're going to get kind of a mid-grade, I guess you could say, helmet. And it's going to be a little bit more sturdy than your low end, but it's not going to be as nice and luxurious, I could say, I guess, as your high-end helmets. So... Another thing with helmets is they come with three different certifications. You have an ECE, DOT, and Snell. All these ratings are your protection ratings in your country, in your area. So like with DOT, DOT is the United States version of making sure the helmet can withstand what it's supposed to. ECE is same thing as the United States version, a little bit more in depth if I'm not mistaken but it's for your Europe countries and then of course your Snell which I think the only helmet I have right now is the Shoei that is Snell rated where they are their own nonprofit organization if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong so don't hate on that but they do go to these motorcycle stores uh, like Cycle Gear uh, all the motorcycle retailers and they take the helmets and actually grab a box of that helmet take it back to their own testing facility test it and see if it is worthy of the Snell, DOT, ECE stamps. And, I mean, they're a really good company, and I would honestly trust my head versus a Snell than most just regular helmets. So, what helmet is right for you, and what are you looking to get? So, when you're looking at what helmet is right for you, first off, you want to look at your ride style. So, if you're riding a Harley, I know a lot of guys are going to want to wear rain buckets. I really don't suggest them because they don't cover the bottom half of your mug. And honestly, I like the bottom half of my face. So I, I'm sorry if y'all are hearing any kind of noise from outside. It's starting to rain a little bit and I've got the door open so that I can have a little more light in here. Um, but yeah, so you're going to have like that full face for sure. That's, that's what you want. Um, when you're looking into ride styles, so like I have a Supermoto in the back. I don't know if y'all can see it very well. I think y'all can. So my ride style is going to be, of course, more of a variant style, goggles, you know, drop down visor if I need it. That's going to be my ride style. When I had the FZ07, I was definitely in more street bike helmets, like this Airfly. It's banged up pretty bad. It's a really nice helmet with a visor on top, and then inside it has a drop down. Sorry for the uh, hanging. This is the helmet I wrecked in. So... Then you have, like, I guess this is more your standard. This is what you're more likely to see when you're coming for like a uh, street bike style, just regular round kind of helmet, not too much curvature, drop down visor, regular straps, so what and so forth. Now, once you figure out what your ride style is and what you want to be at and what you're looking to ride in, you need to go through and remember, helmets are only good for five years because the foam inside of them goes bad. And you don't want your head hitting the ground with some bad foam 
and that'd be it. That'd be done, be donezo, and then, you know, coming out with a concussion or much, much worse could be the end. So, another thing you want to look for in a helmet is does it fit properly? And when you fit properly, your helmet should, when you put it on, should fit snug, and you shouldn't be able to move it back and forth too much. So this helmet's pretty snug. I don't have it strapped right now, but when it's strapped, you don't want to be able to grab the helmet by the front and pull it down, and your eyes go up in the helmet. And then when you wiggle it, you want to be able to wiggle it side to side, and you really don't want to be able to put your fingers up in there at all. Like, even if you're wiggling it side to side, so it's nice and snug on your head, so that when you do that, the actual foam of your padding should take the hit before the foam of the helmet. And that's what we're looking for. I'm getting a little flooding in here, guys. Sorry. It doesn't rain much in Cali. It just started raining. Um, but once you get the proper fit, you know your ride style, you know how long they last, and you know the rating you want to get, it's pretty simple from there. You definitely want to start looking into like what are, what are you trying to put in the helmet, what are you trying to do to the helmet, because a lot of helmets come with uh, areas in the ears where you can actually put speakers. And in all three of these helmets, I have a comm system. I really enjoy my music when I ride. It's something that uh, gets me through a ride. Sometimes, you know, just riding down the street by yourself with no music, you start talking to yourself, which, I mean, I guess I do on a normal basis, talking to you guys. So, it is what it is. Also, you want to see if, like, my shoey. I have the option to put goggles in. I really enjoy putting goggles in. And that's something like that. So once you get what you want to do to it, ride style, you know the ratings you need. Uh, you've got everything down. That's when you're going to come to the price range thing. And then a lot of people are going to tell you, hey, don't buy the $120 helmet. You need to buy a $600 helmet. And honestly, I'm not here to tell you otherwise. Because I honestly trust my head better in my shoey than I do in the speed and strength. But I will say the speed and strength has taken multiple impacts. I'll pick up and show you. It has taken multiple impacts to the skull, to the brain of the actual shell. And it's still holding pretty well. Even though this is just a simple, I think it's fiberglass under here, plastic, and the EPS foam. Now what I, would I want to fall in a $124 helmet doing 65? No. By no means, maybe like 30 miles an hour, that's an okay crash. I'll feel fine. Hopefully we'll get through it. Now, when it comes down to your mid-range helmets, a lot of people are going to talk smack about my icon real quick. I know it. If you're going to leave comments in there, talk smack about icon. Alright. Honestly, I feel like icon is the jixers, you know, of the helmet world, I guess you could say. A lot of people are going to talk smack about it, even though they're not a terrible bike. It's just people that wore them kind of turned it into what it did. I still enjoy Icon. Of course, it's got pretty cool colors. Uh, different decals. Their helmets fit very nicely, honestly. I took a fall in this helmet at 65 miles an hour. And all it did was scuff up my visor. It did actually impact through the shell, and so my foam is no longer good. It took my vent cap off and kind of destroyed this comm system a little bit. But as you can tell, for the most part, it's pretty solid. It's still a good helmet, even though I kind of destroyed it. I'm not going to wear it, of course, because once you take an impact on a helmet, you no longer want to wear that helmet. You want to get a new one immediately. It's the same thing with the five-year rule, but it's one of those things that some helmets, if I'm not mistaken, Shoei definitely does it. And I think there's some other ones out there like Arai and some other companies that if you do take a fall on your helmet, simply box it up, you send it in, they'll do a check, and they'll check your foam and tell you if it's good or not, and tell you if you can still ride on it. Most of the time you don't want to ride after you hit your head, but uh, that's how it goes. So like my Shoei, however, I have not taken a hit on it. It is a higher end helmet. Don't plan on taking a hit on it, but I do trust it up to 65 miles an hour, even up to 100 miles an hour. I trust my Shoei getting hit compared to any of these. So when I'm talking about the price range and comparing what you feel like could get hit and what couldn't, 
124, I'm looking at probably, I would say, a 30, 40 mile an hour crash is how I'm going to rate it. Depending upon the helmet. Like that speed of strength, specifically, I'm not trusting it past about 35. My mid-grade helmet that I have on the table right now, I trust it up to about 65, 70 miles an hour. It saved my head. It could probably go a little further than that. And then my higher end, I'm going to trust it up to 65, almost 100 miles an hour crash. And I feel like I'm going to walk away pretty good. So when it does come to it, you're paying for what you get. Honestly, if you think your head is only worth $124, good on you. I'm not going to tell you anything else other than that. If it's the perfect helmet, it fits right, it looks cool, you got the ride style down, everything's perfect for you, and it's $124, go for it. If that's how you feel, if that's what you think your head is worth to you. Same thing with mid-grade, if that is what your head is worth to you, uh, usually around mid-range price, you're actually going to get a lot cooler helmets, a lot better, they're going to fit a lot snugger, they're going to have better moisture wicking, better shells. Like I said, as I was kind of going through the price ranges, I was kind of telling you what I trust them at, and that's honestly how the companies kind of go to, and like the higher grade helmet, the better materials you're going to get in there to protect you. So as you go up in price, the helmets is definitely one of the things where you're going to pay for what you get. Um, but you know, it's, it's all down to you. Once you get everything right, you get your ride style down, you get what you want to wear, style, um, you know it's protective, it has all the certifications you need, it fits correctly, you're, alright, let's go buy it. So once you go to buy a helmet, you can buy them online, I have definitely bought this one online, the other two I bought in stores. Um, you can buy online if you've tried it on, honestly, don't buy if you've not tried the helmet on. Go to a store. You can find usually a similar helmet in that style and try it on, and they'll usually fit about the same. Make sure you try them on because different different helmets range different prices. Because uh, my speed of strength is small, my Icon and my Shoei both are larges, and it, it just depends. You know, check. It's it's a large. So both these are larges. This is small. So depending upon the company, the helmet may fit differently. So definitely check into that. Uh, but once you go to buy it, you buy online, usually you get them a lot cheaper than uh, buying in stores. Once you've got your helmet, I'm going to be honest with you, it's your helmet, protect it. I'm pretty bad about stickers, so I'm going to slap stickers on everything. Except for this one recently, I've all i done is wrapped it a little bit and put my Instagram tag, BA Willie. Um, other than that, I mean, when you're looking for a helmet though, make sure it is what you want, it is what you need, and it meets every criteria you're going to put for that helmet. And like I said, if your helmet is only worth, your head is only worth what your helmet is worth. If that makes sense to most of y'all. So if you trust your helmet, in a, or your head in a $600 helmet, and that's how much you feel your head is worth, then that is how much your head is worth. So if you fall, your head is worth $600 to protect. Or you can be like, nah, my head is only worth $124 if I fall 65 miles an hour. I come out with concussion, but, you know, my face is good. I'm solid. Let's go. You know, that's all on you. I'm going to say every time I'm going to pick a $600 helmet, I'm going to go with, like, Chewy or a Rye or somewhere like that. It's got a good rep, good brand. Um, next thing, I guess, I can say about helmets when you're looking for them. Look for comm system capabilities. Uh, most helmets do have them. Fun, nice driving friends. Also look for uh, like where you can mount stuff. Because like my shoe is the Moto Vlog helmet. And right now you can see I got a whole bunch of junk on it. It's GoPro mount, the adapter, a cardio pack top. I got goggles on it. Just double check, see what you're feeling. If that's what you like, if that's what you want to do, go with something like that. Alright guys, so I'm not trying to draw this video out too much, I hope I was somewhat helpful, and if I was, then leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, if I missed anything, and if, or if y'all want me to explain something more in depth, like if you want me to go in depth on the DOT, ECE, Snell, or you want me to go in depth on where your helmet usually hits uh, when you first contact pavement when you fall, or anything like that, really just leave a comment. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I think that's it for today, guys. So, Jay Willie signing out.
and we'll see you next time. Deuce.